Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? So this one's a little bit morbid. My aunt asked me to make a cremation urn for her, but really for her. She's just the type of person that doesn't want to burden her children with that type of thing. She asked me almost a year ago to make it, so I better not waste any more time just in case, although I think she has a few more years left in her. So let's get started. <music> The top of the box is going to be curved and I'm going to achieve that with bent lamination. So I'm cutting up some leftover pieces of MDF to make a form that I can use to bend the wood. And I'm cutting this into some 10 inch by 12 inch uh, rectangles and then I'll glue those up. And then once they're glued up I can cut the curve using the bandsaw. And while the form is gluing up, I'm going to cut some pieces of curly cherry into some thin strips. Uh, I'm resawing it on the bandsaw, and then I will sand it down to thinner strips that I can bend. And now I'll draw a curve onto the form and then I'll cut it out on the bandsaw. And then I like to line my forms with cork, so I'm using some contact cement to apply the cork. And the cork just helps to protect the wood that I'm gluing up and it also helps to compensate for any unevenness in the form. So I have four pieces of cherry and each one is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So the resulting top is just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. And now I'm using the jointer to get a nice straight edge and then I'll run that against the fence on the table saw to clean up the other edge. It's a little unorthodox to cut a curved piece on the table saw like that, so you just need to be very careful and pay attention to what you're doing. And then I have a couple of pieces of wood under each end of the curve just to hold it in the right position so that I can cut the ends so that they are vertical. They'll be vertical when they're mounted on the top of the box. I'm jointing one edge of the wood and then I'll cut it to width on the table saw. The box is sized to hold the remains of a 225 pound person, so it should be big enough to squeeze my ant into it. For the sides of the box I have this piece of curly cherry and I'm going to cut a dado a quarter of an inch from the top, a quarter inch dado, and this top piece will fit into that. And then I'm going to cut a rabbit along the bottom and this bottom piece will fit in there. I'm going to use this depth gauge that I got from Tack Life Tools. It's a digital gauge that measures in millimeters, inches, or even fractions. The nice thing about it is that it can measure in any increment. Um, that's different from my Lee Valley gauge that I used to use that measures in eighths of an inch and quarter of an inch. So this gives me a little bit more flexibility. It's got magnets in the bottom, so I'll just zero it out. In order to zero it, you just press the on-off button quickly. 
then I'll put it over the blade. I'm using a quarter inch dado and I want to come up three eighths of an inch. And I'll come down to 0.375, which is three eighths of an inch. And when I get to the fraction, it measures in decimals, but when I get to a fractional amount, it will put the fraction. So I'm right at 3 eighths. If I raise it up a little bit, you can see it reverts back to the decimal. So I'll lower it back where it was. And there we go, 3 eighths of an inch. Now I'll set the fence to be a quarter of an inch away from the inner side of the blade. Now I'm using a dado blade to cut the rabbit but instead of changing out the quarter inch dado set that I have installed already, I'm just gonna use that one with multiple passes. Now I'm gonna cut miter joints and I wanna set a 45 degree angle on my saw blade. So I've got two digital angle gauges. The one that I've been using up until now is this Wixi gauge, which is pretty inexpensive and pretty accurate. And I just got this Tac Life gauge. Um, it's a little bit different, has a couple of additional features. One is that it has this hold button, which is nice. You can set the angle and then walk away with it and use it to remember where you were. And the other is it has a percentage versus a uh, degree indicator. So you can set it at degrees or a percentage, which is kind of nice. One feature that's kind of cool about this one is when you turn it upside down, it's kind of like a cell phone, so the display rotates as well. So I can see one degree there, flip it around this way, and now I've got it seven and a half, eight degrees. One thing I'm not sure that I, that I like about that though, is you can see when I'm rotating the two of them together, when I get up to 90 degrees and go past 90 degrees, the Wixie gauge tells me I'm at 101 degrees and the Tac Life gauge tells me that I'm at 77. So I've got to do some math. If I really wanted to know if I was at 101 or 102 degrees, I have to take 12 plus 90 and add that together. So that's a little bit more challenging for the brain. Um, interesting feature though. I will calibrate to zero it out and then I want to get to 45 degrees. So it's at 45.1 degrees, not exactly 45 uh, and that's a common issue and I'm not going to go to the trouble of adjusting my table saw setup. And so the way to get around that is to cut your miter joints on each side of the blade so that you're guaranteed to have a 90 degree angle when you match them up. That way, even if this was 46 degrees, I would have 44 degrees on the other side and it would add up to 90, 90 degrees. Now that I've got the blade set up, I'm gonna mark the edge of the board to know whether to cut on the right side of the blade or to the left side of the blade so that I get perfect 90 degree angles. When I'm cutting the 45 degree mitered corner, I like to have a backer board that helps me to align exactly where I'm cutting. I want to have continuous grain around the box. I won't have it all the way around because uh, the last end won't line up. So by having this, this backer piece, not only does it prevent any tear out, but it helps me to align exactly where I'm cutting. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting all of the pieces on the left side of the blade. Then I will adjust my miter gauge so that it's positioned to cut on the right side of the blade. And I will cut each of the other ends of each board that I've already cut. And this gives me perfect 90 degree corners because of the fact that I'm using the alternating side of the blade for each corner. And now I'm cutting the top to length. 
now cutting the width of the bottom piece as well as the length. So now I'm going to put a vertical spline down the miter joint. And to do that I'm using a uh, and to do that I'm using my dado blade and I've got it set 45 degrees. So now it's perpendicular to the angle that I had already cut. And I'll do that on each piece. So I've got the sides of the box taped up and I'm going to set the bottom in just to make sure that it fits. I measured it pretty carefully so it should fit snugly. There we go. So that fits really well. And so now what I'm going to do is lift it out. So I've got this cool measuring square that I got from Lee Valley the last time I was in Toronto. And I'm going to just measure the, the depth of this rabbit. So I'll position it against the inside face of the box and then tighten it up. And then I want to make it just a little bit bigger than that so that it doesn't fit too tightly. Otherwise it's going to be pretty hard to assemble, I think. So it's a little bit of a loose fit. And then I'll take the square and position it against the side of the blade, the outside of the blade. And I'll move the fence across so that it snugs right up against the end of the square. Now to get the, the height of the blade, I'm going to use the Tack Life depth gauge. And when I push this down, it doesn't go all the way down, it just comes down to the zero point. They have this depth pin that attaches to the back. And I'll zero it out on the table saw. And then I'll set it up top, bring it down, and it comes to 0.36 inches. I'm going to set it up just a little bit higher than that. So I'll bring it up to 0.37. So about 0.1 inches higher than, than what I need. And that way, the, the bottom can be recessed a little bit so that it's not protruding when it's screwed in. Now I'll use my dado blade to cut a rabbit all the way around the bottom, around both sides and, and both ends. And just like I did before, instead of changing out my dado set to a, a thicker blade, uh, I'm just using the quarter inch blade because it was already installed. And I'll just do multiple passes to take out all the material that I need. Now a dado blade can leave fine tooth marks on the top of the cut. So I'm using a rabbit plane to clean up the tooth marks so that I have a nice clean surface. Now I'll test the fit of the top. And it's pretty snug. Uh, when it's all glued up and the miter joints are tight, it's gonna be a very tight fit. In fact, it might be just a little bit too tight, so I think I'm gonna just sand one of the sides and one of the ends to make sure that it's a little bit looser. And then the only things remaining are I need to fit the splines in here before I can glue it up. And I also want to sand the interior and the exterior, uh, especially the interior because it's a lot easier to sand it before I glue it up. And now I'm using my Tack Life sander to sand the interior of the sides of the box. I'm using the Tack Life sander because Tack Life gave me a sander to review and I wanted to fully test it out by using it on a project. And now using a small piece of walnut, I'm cutting the splines that will be inserted into the miter joint. And then I'll glue everything up. The top is not glued in, it just sits loosely into the dado. And that way the wood can move, it can expand and contract and it won't put any pressure or cause any cracking. And then I'll just clean up the ends of the spline with a block plane. And 
And now I'm cutting a piece of walnut that will serve as the legs that go on the side of the box. This will elevate it a little bit. So I cut out one of the corners and now I've got a pattern for a curved leg that I made on the computer and I'm just gluing this onto the piece of wood and then I'll cut it out on the bandsaw. So after I've made the first cut, I'll flip it over, put another pattern on, and then I'll make another cut on the bandsaw. Now to do this properly, really the piece should be horizontal. You can see that it's tilted down now because I made that first cut. Uh, it wasn't too important for me in this case because I knew that I was gonna clean it up on the sander anyway. But if I was making something bigger, like a table leg that had a curve, then I would wanna do that properly. And now I'm sanding the outside of the box before attaching the table legs. Now to make sure that the legs are all attached at the proper length, I'm setting the box up on a couple of blocks of wood and I have the, the box on a flat surface. So now each of the legs is the proper length. And I've glued them up and now I'm just taping them to hold them in place. There's really no need to clamp them. So this is the box as it stands so far. I just have the top temporarily mounted on this block of wood just to get an idea of how it's going to look. Um, ultimately, I will have this attached with dowels running through the top. And in my opinion, it just looks a little bit plain. I know it's a good design principle to keep things simple, but I think it's a little bit too plain in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it down the middle and leave about a quarter of an inch gap between the two sections. And then I will create a, a handle out of this piece of walnut and slip it in there and then glue it in to hold the two sections together. So I'll use my Tack Life depth gauge to get the height of the blade and I'll just zero it out by pressing the on button. And then I'll set it over the high point of the blade. And I wanna come up to about one and a half inches. Nothing here has to be that precise, but I wanna get it fairly close. So I wanted to get the blade about 0.45 inches away from the fence. And I want to measure that to the outside of the blade. And so that'll be about 7 sixteenths of an inch. Now I'm not going to be cutting all the way through this piece, so I had to remove my riving knife, otherwise it would hit the piece and prevent it from traveling all the way through the blade. So I'm just cutting an equal amount from each side, and that will leave a piece that's centered in the middle. And then I'll cut those pieces off. And now I'm cutting the top into two equal strips so that the handle can be inserted between those two pieces. And now I'm just clipping the two pieces together to hold them in place while I mark the center point. I've raised the top up so that the handle can protrude through it. And it's very important to make sure that everything is horizontal, otherwise the handle will appear crooked after it's glued up. Now I'll just cut that piece out and then clean it up with a sander. Now I'm sanding the corners down quite aggressively. I want to make them quite rounded and, and, and almost tapered. And now that everything is sanded, I'm applying a coat of de-waxed shellac. 
This will be just the base coat and then I will finish it up with lacquer. And now I have to attach the top and I'm doing that just with two dowels, one on each side. I'm putting the first dowel in just to hold it in place while I drill the other hole. That helps to make sure that everything is properly aligned. And now I'm applying lacquer to the top of the box and to the bottom of the top because it will be too difficult to finish that after it's been assembled. After the finish is dried, I can glue the top on. And I'll cut those dowels off. You need to be careful when cutting these on a curved surface because the saw may cut into the wood. So I cut it a little bit proud and then I'll sand it off. You could also use a card scraper to do this, I suppose, but it's pretty easy to do it with a sander. And now I'm putting a coat of de-waxed shellac on the top. And now I'm drilling holes into the bottom. The bottom needs to be removable so that you can open it up and place the ashes in the box and then seal it back up again. And the bottom needs to be attached in a way that it's secure enough that none of the ashes will leak out. And now to install the screws, I'm drilling holes with a, a 1 16th inch bit, and then I'm using a gimlet to thread the holes. This will make it a lot easier to get the screw in. These are brass screws that I'm using, and they're very easy to shear off, so you wanna make sure that you have properly drilled and tapped holes. And I'm using wax on the screw thread to lubricate it so that it goes in easily. And now I'm sanding everything down prior to putting on the lacquer finish. This is a satin lacquer, a spray-on satin lacquer. So it will end up having a, a, a nice matte finish. Well, here's the finished product. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's got a nice clean finish. Um, I like the way it looks. It's not everyone's taste, I'm sure, but I like it. And my aunt says she's dying to see it. So I'm gonna drive up to Canada tomorrow and drop it off at her place. So I gotta ask, would you make it?